Welcome to this new episode of Not So Fast. In this video, what we are going to discuss is the fundamental theorem of calculus, and in particular, when not to use it. So let's have a look uh, at a quick example, where on the left, you've got the integral from minus 2 to plus 1 of 1 over x dx. Now, for people who have practiced a lot integral solving, then what they are going to do is basically look for whether or not they know the antiderivative of the integral. If they actually do, they are going to directly charge into the problem without thinking twice. Now, as a result, because they know the antiderivative is log of x, they are going to do the following manipulation. They are going to put it in square bracket like this, uh, and then this is going to be equal to the log of 1 minus the log of the absolute value of minus 2 which, as a result, is going to give minus log of 2. Now, it turns out that, you know, as in any case where we tend to jump into a problem uh, without thinking too much, then it turns out that it can sometimes uh, go wrong, like this. And what we are going to do here is try to understand why. So, we've seen so far that there seemed to be a problem in the typical reasoning that we have presented just before for the integral we looked at. Uh, first of all, before understanding where things went wrong, we will try to understand what the person, the trained person, actually uh, tried to do in the first place. It turns out that the reasoning uh, the, that we have seen before is based on something called the fundamental theorem of calculus. It reads uh, as follows, the integral of an interval a, b of f of x dx is equal to uh, uppercase f of b minus uppercase f uh, of a. Now, what are these things and what do they mean? Well, the left-hand side actually means that this is the area that is between the graph of f of x, which is a continuous graph of f of x, and the x-axis. Okay, so that's the meaning of the left-hand side. And the right-hand side is a totally different object. It's actually relating to the antiderivatives, um, which are local operations, at the two endpoints, uh, A and B, of the interval uh, being considered. And so you see here that there is something very specific where we see that there is two different objects that turn out to be uh, equal to each other when some conditions are met. In particular here, the condition is that the graph is being continuous. Now, the notation for anti-differentiation that I've used might be uh, probably new to some of you, uh, but I think it's quite striking you know, that it shows that somehow we are doing the inverse operation uh, of a derivative. Now, uh, this is not something of my invention. If people are interested, uh, this is a kind of notation that can be found when people do so-called fractional calculus. So people who are interested might want to have a go at it. Now, let's go back then to understand what uh, went wrong before. So we had that the integral from minus 2 to plus 1 of 1 over x dx was minus log of 2. Now, the issue, if I interpret this in terms of graphical representation, that the left-hand side actually looks like this. Now, one of the problems is that you see that the graph of f of x actually diverges when it tends to zero, both zero from the positive x and zero from the negative ones. And so, as a result, the actual graph of f of x is discontinuous at x equals zero. Now, what this means that this is discontinuous at x equals zero means that somehow I'm trying to uh, determine the area under a graph which is basically punctured, okay, at a given point. And because it's punctured, obviously, I can't, you know, define the area that is below that curve. So, um, as a result, when it comes to uh, the initial integral that we've defined, it turns out that this integral is actually meaningless. The corresponding object actually doesn't exist. So what do we do then? Uh, we've got this uh, object that doesn't exist that seems to be equal to minus log of 2. So what does that mean? And in fact, can we actually try to make sense of this? There is actually a way to try to make sense of this. This way relies on the fact that we can look 
separately at the interval from minus 2 to some value minus a, which is not 0. And because here you see that the graph is continuous on this portion, then we can use, no problem, the fundamental theorem of calculus. Likewise, uh, the, this part here is actually well defined because the graph of f is actually continuous there. As a result, we can try actually to add up these two areas. So that's going to look like this. And then try to see what happens when we take the limit when a tends to zero. And this is well defined and this will uh, enable us to avoid trying to determine uh, an area under a curve with a, a puncture. So um, this particular strategy to um, make sense of integrals with graphs that have like punctures in them is what is called Cauchy's principal value. Now the way they are denoted is like this, PV of the integral from minus two to plus one of one over x dx. Now it turns out that because the fundamental theorem of calculus actually holds for the individual sections, so from minus two to minus a, and then from plus a to plus one, we can use the same strategy that we had used before. So we would get something like this. For people who know how to solve such integrals, we'll get the log of absolute value of minus a minus log of two, and then plus log of one minus log of a. Now you see that what happens is that these two logs disappear, they compensate each other. So essentially, you know, they overshoot to infinity in one direction, but then to minus infinity in the other. And these two contributions actually compensate to give rise to a finite value. It turns out that this final value is the very same minus log of two we got in the first place in our example. The big difference though, is that in this particular situation, the left-hand side actually exists. It makes sense and it's well-defined. So the whole strategy and scenario is actually fundamental theorem of calculus approved and it's totally valid. Right, so what do we take home from this particular example? Well, the first message is that we should try to make sure that the left-hand side and the right-hand side both are well defined when we want to apply the fundamental theorem of calculus. In the case that we have looked at, there was a way to interpret the left-hand side in a consistent manner with the right-hand side, which was, which was this Cauchy's principal value uh, strategy. Now, it turns out that this strategy is very far from being useful in all situations. So, for example, if instead of 1 over x, you take the integral from minus 2 to plus 1, of 1 over x squared, then the object itself still doesn't exist. Uh, but on top of this, the fix that we, that we used, which was Cauchy's principal value, doesn't apply either. So what I mean by that is that there is no compensation that we've seen earlier in the case of 1 over x. So essentially, the whole integral blows up uh, and, and basically is infinite. So we see here that, the, that there is basically some care that needs to be put when addressing any problem uh, when it comes to integration. And in particular, try to figure out whether your use of the fundamental theorem of calculus is actually legitimate.